everyone, it's Natalie. Welcome to my channel if it's the first time you've ever been here or if you have been here before. Thank you so much for stopping by again to watch another video. Today's video is a get ready with me. It might look like I'm in my house, but I'm actually about 600 miles away from my house right now. I am in Medford, Oregon for a friend's wedding. I'm here at our Airbnb right now. We've got the cutest little spot and Weston's not here right now because he's one of the groomsmen in the wedding. He's off taking pictures and you know, hanging out with the groomsmen and doing all of those things. And I have the whole Airbnb to myself to get ready, to share my makeup look, my hairstyle, my outfit with you guys. I'm a little froggy because my allergies have not been so great. And oh, can you tell? Look at how short my hair is. <laughs> the last video I did was a favorite products um, and styles for long hair. I filmed it just in time because then I chopped about 12 inches off. I'm donating eight to 10 of those inches and now I'm working with much shorter hair in a little bit. Later on in this video I'm going to be styling my hair. For right now I just washed it and blow dried it, threw a little claw clip back in there and I'm going to start in on my makeup. So before I ramble any more I should probably just hop into it. So first I'm going to be starting with this Hello Fab Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer. I've talked about this one before. This is my favorite makeup primer and moisturizer of all time. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a perfect base for a more glowy look, which is what I'm going for today. Kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit of summer inspiration. I'm not going to be doing much off the beaten path as far as Natalie's makeup goes. You guys have seen a lot of these products several times before in my videos, but I just thought I would share what I'm working on today and share a little bit more of a glamorous look than what I typically do for like an everyday makeup look on my channel. You guys know I like to keep things easy and mom friendly and today I am kid free. Our kids are back in the Seattle area with their grandparents. Weston and I are kid free on this trip, which has been so nice. I do miss my kiddos, but it has been nice to just have some time just one-on-one -on -one with Weston, enjoying a nice little trip. I have another primer that I'm gonna go in with. This is a new one and it's such a favorite of mine. I've never used an under eye primer that I've really liked before, before this one. This is the Glossier Bubble Wrap Eye and Lip plumping cream. One little pump is enough for both under eyes and I just take it on my ring fingers and pat it on in and I do not wait for it to completely um, soak in to my skin. I still keep it nice and glossy and then I go in with concealer. Today I am using an oldie but a goodie. This is the Age Rewind Eraser by Maybelline and it's so funny the packaging still says new instant age rewind. It's not new. This is one of the OG YouTube concealers, but I love it. It's so, so good. Tarte Shape Tape, I think will always be my favorite, but this is a wonderful drugstore option. It just doesn't last quite as long. It doesn't have quite as much coverage as Shape Tape does, but it's like a quarter of the price. I'm concealing under eye circles and any little blemishes that I have around my face. I always have little acne scarring around here from hormonal acne. Today I'm blending everything in with the Morphe M439 brush. I love using this brush. It makes it super easy just to blend everything in. And that uh, Glossier primer, my goodness, it makes such a difference. I'm someone with uh, dry to normal skin and especially under my eyes, man, it can get crepey and so, so dry and concealers, even like emollient concealers, they still settle into those lines and then seem to make it look even more dry down there. But this Glossier Primer, it has made a huge difference. For foundation today, I'm using the Positions Formula, the Healthy Foundation. Surprise, surprise, this is like the only foundation that I've used for over a year. I love it. I've tried other foundations, none of them compare, and I'm not using that much, just a swipe in areas where I need just a little bit more coverage. And again, I'm blending that out with the same Morphe buffing brush. I'm blending and taking calls from Weston and my mom. We had a package delivered that actually needs to go into the fridge, and so we're trying to coordinate people to do that back home. 
but I've just been blending with the Morphe brush, adding a little bit more concealer here and there, and blending in also with my Real Techniques blending sponge. I like to go in with a brush initially just to apply everything to my face and buff it in, and then I go in with the sponge and detail certain areas to take away any uh, brush strokes and to just really make it all melt in and look as natural as possible. So today I am setting with the CoverGirl Advanced Radiance Pressed Powder. I also brought the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder with me. And if my skin was a little bit more naturally dewy right now, I would probably go in with that. But because I've been pretty dry, the climate here is pretty dry, um, I am gonna go in with the Advanced Radiance Press Powder. I'm so glad I brought this with me um, because this has a nice um, radiance to it, natural radiance, it's not sparkly at all, but it is a nice powder for setting things but not making things look dry and cakey. So I'm actually using the back side of that Real Technique sponge and I'm just pressing that powder in and going over spots especially that I've concealed just to set the uh, concealer or foundation in that spot. My neck and chest might be a little darker than my face right now. I am actually wearing some self tan um, I and I discovered a new self tan. I don't want to give away all of my summer favorites yet. That's, I think the next video going out on my channel is my summer favorites. Let's talk about the bronzer I'm using today. This is the Pure Cosmetics Bronzing Act Matte Bronzer Light. I saw Raw Beauty Christy use this in one of like her first impressions videos and the way she was describing its undertone and the way it was applying and the finish of it sounded exactly like the bronzer I have always been looking for. And I am a drugstore makeup girl, but when there's like a standout product, it's usually, for me, worth the extra money to get something that's going to outperform everything. And I have trouble with bronzer. I am quite fair, as you can see. And I have a tricky undertone to my skin. A lot of the time, bronzers either look really yellowy on my skin or really pinky, but I actually need some more olive and some more red in a bronzer. And this shade, my goodness, it's beautiful and it smells like chocolate, which is really cool. So I'm using the Morphe M406. This is, oh, a stippling brush, I think it's called. Dual fiber stippling brush. And I'm going to put this higher up than um, like a contour and it just blends in so beautifully. I've been using this for about six weeks now and it hardly looks like I've made a dent into this bronzer and it just adds beautiful, natural looking color. And I'm gonna put it up into my hairline. I'm just adding it to the places that I would normally get sun on the bridge of my nose. And I saw Christy do this in a couple of videos, sweeping it on the under eye because that's where we tan. We tan right here when we're out in the sun. And this is the sort of bronzer because of the finish. It's not too matte, even though it says it's matte. It's not chalky at all, which has been my complaint with other matte bronzers. Um, it's very skin-like in my opinion, and I have actually worn this bronzer on its own when I'm having like a no makeup day, but I want to add some color to my face. I will just pop some of this bronzer on and it's gorgeous. I love it. I love the way it looks. I'm gonna put a little under my jaw and it, it's never patchy. It's never powdery, it's absolutely beautiful. And that bronzer actually works on its own. Like I don't always feel like I have to put blush on when I'm wearing this bronzer, but I am going to pop just a little bit of color on my cheeks. This is the Milani Luminoso Baked Powder Blush, another really oldie sort of product. But I'm just going to add just a little bit. I'm barely kissing my cheek with the end of this brush. I'm using that same Morphe brush. This has a bit of a shimmer in it, not sparkly, but there is reflective ingredients in this and it just adds such a healthy sort of glow and sheen. I add just a little bit right above my eye, right up here to make it look more natural, just a bit to my nose 
and chin just to tie it all in. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a little bit of eyeshadow. You guys know I like to keep it minimal. This is gonna be a bit more on the glamorous side for Natalie, which honestly isn't all that much makeup still. <laughs> but I'm actually going into this Pure Cosmetics bronzer and I'm just going to fluff that into the crease with, you guys know it, my favorite Morphe brush, the M505. I don't even have to look, I know. The Morphe M505, if I could have one brush in my collection, it would be this brush. This brush makes putting together an eye look so stinking easy because if you have an eyeshadow that has like too much pigmentation or is looking choppy, like maybe it's bad quality or maybe you're a novice at makeup, this brush will blend away your worries. It literally does the work for you. It's amazing. You guys have seen me do this before. I like to use my bronzer shade in the crease as my transition shade, um, or sometimes as the only shade of eyeshadow I'm wearing to tie in the rest of the look. It makes it really nice and cohesive. It also cuts down on the amount of product that you use, like the number of items, especially if you're packing for a trip. And I'm also gonna go in with that Milani baked blush a little bit deeper into the crease and I raise my eyelids to get just a little bit deeper, uh, closer to the eyelid itself. And then doing that ties in the blush that I'm wearing on my cheeks. And it just makes the look really cohesive and come together. And it's like a foolproof way to match your eye look to your rest of your face, like the colors that you've got going on. Cause I know that sometimes can be confusing, like cool versus warm tones and how to mix and match it. And you know, there are some rules to makeup, but we don't always have to follow them. Um, but sometimes it is nice to have an actual like guide or um, kind of a method that you go by and the whole blush and bronzer trick in your eyeshadow look really has helped me. I did bring a eyeshadow palette. You guys have seen me use this before. This is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Rose in the Air. I've had this forever. I'm just gonna use this really dark brown matte shade. I'm packing that onto the side of a Morphe M507 brush. It's kind of like a tiny version of that Morphe M505. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that on the outer V. It's gonna look a little crazy and unblended for a second until I go back in with that Morphe M505 brush and blend it all out. So I'm just kind of uh, depositing that pigment right here on this outer side and then bringing it up into that outer crease just a little bit. Do the same thing on the other side. I am not really someone who can work on one eye at a time from start to finish. Um, I have to go back and forth and back and forth. My eyes aren't perfectly even, like nobody's eyes are. And so I kind of have to play with the shadows and kind of trick the eye into making them look a little bit more even. Doing one eye from start to finish handicaps me. It makes it so I cannot do that. So I'm gonna take, there's still a little bit of that dark pigment on the end, like the actual tip of this brush. And I'm just gonna keep fluffing it into the crease, just bringing it a little bit closer in each time. And I am touching my eyelid or this crease ever so lightly with this brush. And now I'm also gonna take that pigment down underneath my lash line and drag it in a little bit. Just working with any of that excess powder that's here that I deposited and making the best use of it while it's there. And now there is still excess powder and I'm gonna go in with that Morphe M505 brush and blend it away. Blending and blending and blending circular motions. And I like to blend inward because my eyes are already quite wide set. I like to continue to bring that darker pigment inwards. Um, it just kind of makes my eyes look just a tiny bit closer together. I don't wanna take the darker pigment too far out because then it just continues to drag my eyes apart from each other. Now we have to customize the way we do our own makeup. If you see a makeup tutorial on YouTube, you have to really take into account that person's face shape, eye shape, the way the proportions of their face are all put together and then kind of take what they're doing with their techniques and 
make it fit your face. And make this look a little bit smoky. Weston loves a good smoky look on me. I love going to weddings with Weston. I've said it before. We love going to weddings together. It's so fun to dress up and to, you know, kind of show each other off a little bit. I kind of cringe at that term, but there's an element of it that's true and fun. So I'm not putting my fingers on my makeup and maybe taking some of it off or smudging it. I'm just gonna use this uh, sponge and pull my eye to the side and add some of this. What is this? I should probably not do that so I can read this. This is the Rimmel London Exaggerate Waterproof Eye Definer in blackest black. And I like it because it's one of those twisty up sort of ones and you don't have to sharpen it. I hate sharpening eye pencils. I feel like half of the eye pencil goes away into the garbage can because in order to get a nice sharp tip, you have to cut off so much of the product. Anyone else feel that way? Or do you have an eye pencil sharpener that actually works well and doesn't make that happen? So I am just smudging this as close to my lash line as possible from the inside to the outside, not making the line very thick, just keeping it as close to the lash line as I can. You can do that on the other side as well. Hey Siri, what time is it? It's 3.22 p.m. Good grief, I gotta get going. I'm also gonna add a little bit of this to my lower and upper water lines. Again, your eye shape really will dictate how you do your own eyeliner. A lot of people can't put dark eyeliner on their waterline because it makes their eyes look smaller and closed off. I don't mind it so much because my eyes are on the bigger side. I still try not to go too crazy with all of that. So the next brush I'm gonna use is the e.l.f. smudge brush. This is like a $3 brush from Target. And I'm just going to take um, that eyeliner that I have down and smudge it out and start to bring it up onto my lid and kind of make it smoky and smudgy. I love this look. You guys have seen me do this so many times before. I love a good smoky eye. Not an intense smoky eye. I don't go all Jaclyn Hill on it. It's just not my style to be too over the top with my makeup. This is about as dark and sultry and glamorous as it gets for me. This is looking a little unblended. Going back in with the Morphe M505 brush and just blending that out beautiful. Now I am going in with one more product for my eye look and that is the ColourPop So This Is Love. This is from the Disney designer collection and it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm just going to use my ring finger and get just a little bit. I just want a kiss of shimmer on my lid just in this inner portion. I don't want it to be too metallic and reflective so I'm only laying down just a bit of this. It adds some highlight and more dimension to the eye look. So before I go in with any brow products or mascara, I'm actually going to put some setting spray on my face. This is the Pixi Hydrating Milky Mist. You guys have seen me use this so many times before. It's still my favorite facial spray. Now that my face makeup has gotten a chance to kind of warm up to my skin and melt in, I'm gonna look, before I spray this, I'm gonna look for anything that's maybe a little patchy, needs a little extra blending. So like here, I always get this one little patch that seems to look unblended. So I'll just go back in with that Morphe blending brush. Just kind of buff it right back into looking a little bit less patchy. It's just a spot on my face that always acts up. Kind of blend it all back together and then I'm going to spray my face down with this. I do this before mascara or like brow gel to help it not transfer or run. It makes my skin look like skin again. I don't know if you guys can tell, it's so hard for things to translate like exactly over camera, especially with this lighting, I'm just using the window. So it might not be looking exactly like it looks for me, but just like take my word for it, this product makes a huge difference. While I'm still waiting for my eyelashes to kind of dry off just a little bit more, I'm gonna go in with the Benefit Gimme Brow. This is a new product that I've been trying. Um, you guys know that I've enjoyed the Glossier Boy Brow, which I actually do like more than this product. I'm still working with it. I'm not calling this a favorite yet, but it does the job just fine. And I like not having to use a brow pencil. So I am using the pigment from this, which I wear the number five color in the Benefit Gimme Brow. 
um, I'm just using the pigment in this product to bring my brow in a little bit farther. I'm going to clean this up in a minute. Don't worry. I'm not doing caterpillar brows today. And um, this tiny little spoolie on the end of the gimme brow, much like the um, Glossier Boy Brow, helps me create like hair strokes here. And I've noticed that bringing my eyebrows in a little bit closer is more flattering for the other things on my face, like my eye width and my nose. I've really enjoyed doing it like this. And I just brush those front hairs up a little bit just to make them a bit feathery. And then I put the other brow hairs in place, depositing a little bit of pigment there just to fill everything in. And then I have a clean spoolie. Where did you go, clean spoolie? I have this e.l.f. spoolie, it's dual-ended. There's a little um, angled brush on this side and a spoolie on this side. And I'm gonna go in and scrape away any pigment on this. That's just a bit too much. I like to do my brows looking a little bit more natural, a little bit more on the wild side, not too wild, but I don't like perfectly chiseled brows. However, I have found that it makes a huge difference when I carve out the top part of my brow because my brows are a little bit uneven. Um, this one is a bit higher than this one. And so I'll just take some of the concealer that I used before and go on this flat brush and just draw a little line like right here and work quickly before it sets. And then I'll just clean up any parts that maybe have a little bit too much pigment or I went a little wild with the line. Not too carved out, but definitely cleaned up when I do that. Found this little Japanesque um, little buffing brush. It's kind of angled at TJ Maxx. <laughs> and it's the perfect sort of brush for this job. You could also use a like beauty blender, beauty sponge, but this just does that. And this is one of the reasons why I already put the setting spray on my face. Um, typically applying a cream product to a part of your face that's already been powdered makes things start to lift up and pill up and just kind of look weird. But after applying that milky mist, things are back to more of like a cream or skin-like texture and it all melts together beautifully. And that's how I've been doing my brows lately. Okay, on to mascara. I'm just going to curl my eyelashes. This is, I don't even know what this is. I think this is a Japanesque. I got it at Target. Just basic eyelash curler. I go in twice on both lashes. I like to make my lashes look as feathery and long as possible. I'm not a big um, chunky eyelash person. I don't ever go for volumizing mascaras, I'm always looking for length. And a mascara that I have been absolutely loving is the Pacifica Dream Big Mascara. And I love the fact that you can actually change the tip of this with this little twisty part here. And if you make it shorter, it adds volume. And if you make it longer, it adds length and featheriness, which is exactly what I'm looking for. This is also a non-toxic formula, which is really great, especially right close to your eye. And look at that, how pretty is that? Get a little closer so you guys can see. Maybe turn down that exposure. Can you see? Going on the other side. I should have been sitting this close for when I did my eyeshadow and eyeliner and stuff. My apologies. I'm not a beauty guru. I'm not a beauty vlogger. I just like makeup sometimes. But it's not like I was going in with some intricate halo cut crease sunset thing. Okie doke, now I'm gonna go in with a lip product and this is gonna be it actually. Um, this is a new favorite of mine. I've been obsessed. I actually found this at TJ Maxx as well. Um, and sometimes stuff there can be a little iffy. I will never purchase anything that looks like it's been opened. But I opened this up and I saw that the lipstick had never been used. Today I'm going in with two different colors from the Bare Minerals. This is like their, what's it called? Like lustrous lips? I'll, everything is linked below. I'm, I'm not coming up with the name and it doesn't have the actual name of the product here, but this is like their glossy 
formula of their lipstick and I'm going in with two colors. First of all, Heaven, which is a darker rosy nude and then Sex Pot, which <laughs> Weston didn't even know what that term meant. It was so funny. This is like a warm taupey nude and it's hard to find nudes for my skin tone because I am quite fair. So first I'm going in with Heaven, which is basically my exact natural lip color. And then I'm gonna go in with Sex Pot, which the names of some cosmetics, oh my gosh. There are certain products I will literally never use in a video because I would just blush too much if I said the name of them. I think we all know what I'm talking about, especially since I just said blush. So I have been going the no highlighter route because especially in a setting like this, a wedding, it's outdoors, usually blushes have some sparkle to them even if in like an indoor setting you couldn't detect actual glitter in an outdoor setting i don't like any sparkle except for maybe just this little bit that i have on my eyes so with that said i am actually going to go in with my real technique sponge i'm just going to use i'm not flipping you off i'm going to use this part of it with the hydrating milky mist i'm going to add a little bit of that to that side of the sponge and just dab it here on the high point of my cheek to add a little bit of luminosity and to take down any powderiness and kind of add it as a highlight. I love the way that this makeup look turned out. This is kind of like my go-to evening wedding makeup. A little bit smoky around that lash line, nude lipstick, glowy, uh, dewy sort of complexion. Love it. Not loving this hair right now. So I will link the vlog where I got my hair cut. Um, it was a huge change, as you guys can see. In that vlog, I'm raising money for St. Jude's Hospital, all of the proceeds from any of the ad revenue on that video is going straight toward St. Jude. And then if you are interested in donating, I will leave all of that information in the description box. And then I also donated my hair itself to Wigs for Kids, which is an awesome organization. They do not charge their recipients for the wigs that they make, which I think is wonderful. And hopefully my hair will get used in one of their wigs. It was really good hair. But now I am left with about 12 inches less hair than I had. And I don't really have much of a tutorial for you guys because I'm still figuring out how to style my hair at this length. This is the shortest it has ever been in my entire life. And while I am happy with the cut, I still have a lot of like learning to do. I'm gonna throw some loose waves into my hair, straighten any little tweaky areas, try to get this part that's like flipping out. I always get this like Wendy's restaurant thing going on. I'm gonna try to get my hair to like kind of curve in a little bit so I don't look like 2003 mom haircut. And I'll just speed through that for you guys cause I don't have much teaching to do when I'm doing that. Once that's done, I'm gonna put my outfit on and then I've gotta head out because I'm running out of time to get to this wedding. Okay, so I'm dressed and ready and I realized there's no full length mirror in this Airbnb. So I'm gonna do my best to like show you what I'm wearing and everything. But this is how the hair turned out. I'm happy with it. I got my sunglasses on top. Whoops. I got one side pinned up and the other side with loose waves. I'm bringing my sunglasses because it's going to be bright at the wedding. This work? <laughs> so I have this little Michael Kors nude blush purse. This cute little high neck, really dark eggplant purple dress with cute little buttons going down the back. This dress hits right at the knee for me. And then I have my Lucky Brand two-strap nude heels on, which kind of match the purse a little bit. I'm also going to be bringing my Birkenstocks with me because afterward, since Weston is a groomsman, we're going to pitch in and help like clean everything up and stack chairs. So I've got the Birkenstocks to bring with me and then I'm also bringing, I'm gonna wrap this up really tight and put it in my purse. It's just a little light scarf to wrap around my arms if it gets a little chilly or breezy. So now it's time to head out and go enjoy the wedding. Mm -hmm. 